Well, hello and welcome back. Come on in. I'd like to address today one of my favorite people in the realm of classroom management, which is Dr. William Glasser. Uh, Bill Glasser was a medical doctor and a psychiatrist by trade. And Glasser stumbled into, and I don't know what the story is behind this, but somehow stumbled into classroom, the classroom behavior management uh, arena and started applying what effectively were logical psychiatric principles. And the big umbrella here is that as, as I'm sure he experienced with any of his uh, clients, was that you have to treat these people in a positive, motivating, engaged way for them to participate. End of story. <laughs> Period. Well, those of us that are experienced educators know exactly that. <laughs> that. That is indeed true. That you have to motivate, you have to inspire on occasion, and you always have to engage instructionally with your students in order to succeed. And there are numerous lists and bullet points in the uh, text which identifies all the minutia under Glasser's approach. I'm not going to go into that depth, but I would like to cover some of the main issues here. And we, we hit one, the key word here is engaging curriculum. That whatever you're presenting, whether it's social studies, math, science, PE, literature, needs to be engaging. Or you have no audience. You have an audience of one, which is you listening to you. And every one of those doctrines can be made engaging. Now, it may take some practice, but they can be made engaging. One of Glasser's key points is you have to offer quality teaching if you're expecting quality learning. You just let that process for a bit. You have to offer <clears throat> quality teaching if you are expecting quality learning. Now that pretty much puts you and me dead center ground zero for every success in that classroom, doesn't it? And as Glasser's model is called, it's frequently called choice theory, you have to identify academic choices in order for students to succeed academically and socially. Glasser smacks us with the with the the issue that we need we must meet the needs of the students in our classroom if we want them to be engaged. And you're going to hear that word in this video a lot. Engaged. If we're not meeting the needs of those students, then they will what? This engage. So if it's not happening from an instructional standpoint, it ceases in most cases to be an issue with the student. It's an issue resonant with the teacher because that teacher is not meeting the needs of that particular student. Let me back up and give you a little history on Bill Glasser. 
um, Glasser got a lot of pushback from the academic um, arena when he entered into the classroom management field. They said, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're an MD. You're not a PhD or an EDD. We don't fix patients. How about you don't fix classroom management? And the and the the industry, the you know, many of the profession pushed back because they, they thought Glasser had overstepped his bounds. Well, <laughs> those of us that came in later and were perhaps a little more enlightened realized that the same philosophy of being successful with a psychiatric patient was were philosophies we could employ in the classroom. Now, I'm, not, I'm trying to stay real clear here. I'm inferring that our students are psychiatric patients. They're not. They're just kids. But Glasser got a lot of pushback uh, when he first came on the scene. And fortunately, he stayed in the game. Uh, for me, Glasser is my go-to man. Um, engaging, providing choices is what I'm all about. Now, some people, some students will read Glasser and they get the point where it says, you know, let the students make the rules or let the students consider choosing the curriculum. Well, that's not really what Glasser is saying. What Glasser is saying is that you as the educator can limit the free range of choice and guide the students through a couple of options. That's still giving them choice, isn't it? That's still, they are participating in the decision, but what have you done? You've, you've honed those choices down to a couple that will work either way. It's okay to do that as an educator. Um, Glasser talks about the seven deadly habits that the newbie teacher frequently makes. Um, and then he, then he does a transition off of each one of those into the what he calls the seven connecting habits. I'm not going to cover those. Those are available within the literature. Last thing I want to mention to you, and this is a philosophical perspective, is see yourself as an educational guide not as a drill sergeant. And that gets into Glasser's, you know, being a lead teacher versus a boss teacher. See yourself as an instructional or educational guide and not as a drill sergeant. Okay, I've only teased you with most of Glasser. <coughs> Excuse me. Go back and read it. I will drop uh, into the comments down below uh, the uh, Glasser website uh, so that you can visit that at your leisure. Let's get you back to class.